You bet. Usually I start that differently. I go, hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Welcome to our live video series. I'm a little foggy today. All right, what we're doing today is we are taking a look at the 2022 Kia Seltos. That's the newest model with the newest logo that just showed up. And we're going to compare it to the 2022 Kia Sportage. Now, two quick things. Kia Sportage. First of all, I say it Sportage because we're from Canada. That's how it's said here. So if you're not from Canada and you don't want to hear me say that, I apologize, that's what we call it here. Uh, also, if you are looking for the next generation Kia Sportage, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, because I promise you no one will cover that in further detail than us. The 2022 Kia Sportage in Canada is essentially a carryover model with some nice little tweaks to it. And we're gonna go over that in detail and compare it to the Kia Seltos. The next generation Kia Sportage which will be coming out. And at this point, we have no information other than we've seen some pictures of it. We know it'll be a little larger. We've talked about a few differences. We don't even know powertrain yet, but when that information comes out, I will cover it in detail here. And we'll follow it up as they have more details. We'll do more and more and more. And I promise you, if you hit subscribe button, looking for that uh, next generation Sportage, I will have more information than just about anybody. I will do my best, I promise you. So in the meantime, those of you that are looking for a good comparison of cars that are on dealer lots today, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do my absolute best to go through these vehicles in detail with our live audience. And they're going to ask me some questions. And I'm going to try to show you guys what you want to see in this video. Now, in the meantime, what we do is we allow the first three minutes of our video, we allow our live audience to build. So if you're not watching live with us, you can skip ahead to that three minute mark and we'll cover these in detail at that point. We'll get to the content. In the meantime, we'll share some news, share some notes, and we will also... Uh, show you how to join us live because we do this every day except I've got some vacation coming up So first of all if you want to follow us on Instagram um, I'm not I'm not a big you don't have to follow me I'm not pressuring you into that in any way But this is where I will post what I'm doing every day before it goes on YouTube So you can ask your comments there a lot of people like to ask some comments there Before the video starts and then that way we can uh, answer them in the video and if they can't join us live They get their questions in all right. So here you go if you go to our channel and you refresh the page exactly at two o'clock, which we're at 201 right now, you will see the live video populate right here. We're gonna hit that right there. You're gonna have to watch an ad. Meanwhile, I'm gonna run a quick little ad for us. If you're in Ontario and you're looking to buy a car, preferably a Kia or a Hyundai, uh, connect with me. There'll be a link in this description as soon as the live video is done of how to connect with me. I will hook you up with a sales team that I work with that will treat you like family. They will be people that I will trust to take care of my family. So there we go, do that real quick and we'll flip back around the ad is done and we are back you can see our live audience jumping in here uh if you are uh if you are new for the first time do not forget to uh say hi and that'd be fun and uh we'll go from there okay so three minutes in here we go we're already at the three minute mark okay so three minutes in here we go this is the 2022 kia seltos and i'm going to show you essentially what's new we did a video on this the other day it is the badge out front, which does not have the indent that the oval badge had before. So it cannot just be swapped onto an old model. And it's got a badge out back and on the steering wheel. And other than a couple little software tweaks, which I'll mention again as we go through here, that is essentially what is new here. Oh, I didn't clean that very well, did we? All right, so we've got a little bit, it used to be an oval here. Now it's squared off, new Kia logo on the back there. And I quite like that. Now the 2022 Kia Sportage, again, if you're looking for the next generation, we will have that in detail, but this is the current 2022 model. This is the Night Sky Edition. Now, in the past, we had a Black Wheel S model. We did not have the Night Sky. The Night Sky has these, which will now be limited edition, um, black logoed type uh, um, Kia logos, The what we would call now the old logo, and Sportage in black along there. And uh, the 2022 Kia Sportage will be the only 2022 model that will carry on with the old logo. So you can get the traditional logo and uh, this one will have, again, in the black with the night sky edition here, you will have the uh, very unique uh, dark tinted one, which I kind of like. I'm, I'm kind of sad to see that going away. It looks pretty sharp in person, but that will be the only 22, 2022 model with the, what we call old logo at this point, because we've moved on to that new logo. So if you're looking at um, this, in 2022, we'll have that old logo. Every other 2022 Kia will have the new logo. And these vehicles are so new that here in Canada, we don't even have them on our Kia Canada website yet. So I would normally show you the pricing of all these vehicles right here. And uh, 2021 Seltos, the no option for 2022. 2021 Sportage, no option for 2022. So the prices of these two vehicles, let's just show you the window stickers. 
They are not equal vehicles. Uh, this one is going to have higher technology. That one's going to have some other advantages that we'll talk about as we go through. But I'll show you the pricing right now. We're going to go MSRP to MSRP. $30,995 for these Seltos. This is one step up from the top trim level. The top trim level would add a turbo engine and, uh, you know, dual clutch transmission, heads up display, Bose audio. That's about it. Those are the major components. So $30,009 and $29,000 nine here so thousand dollars cheaper for the sportage and it is um you'll notice that there's some technology downgrades here now you can get a lot of the technology that's in the seltos in the sportage but not everything but you can also get things in the sportage you can't get in the seltos so normally when you go sort of ex to ex lx to lx the seltos is a less expensive vehicle the first two 2022s we happen to get in are this trim level of the Sportage and this trim level of the Seltos. And I think it's a decent comparison because I can see people looking at both in that 30-ish thousand dollar price range and trying to decide which one's best for them. And that's who this video is for. So we're gonna dive in there now. Do me a real quick favor, guys. We've got about 28 of you on. If you guys don't mind hitting that like button, that really helps me out. I'm gonna spend a half an hour dedicating my time to you. I'm gonna ask back for one click. That's all I ask for. So if you could do that, that would help me out. If you're gonna make me earn it, I'm cool with that as long as you just keep watching and let me earn it. All right, so here we go, 2022. These keys are different. So you've got the Kia key for the Seltos. Again, new logo is on the key there as well. It has a remote start and this one happens to be a keyless entry remote. So the key fob is buried, or the actual key is buried in there, but you almost never need to pull it out. And for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna throw this key into my pocket and you will not see it again, unless you ask for it. This one happens to be a keyed car, the Sportage. And you can tell by the older logo which one it is. So the Sportage, same design to the key. It's a little bit thicker because it is. it does have the key in there. And this is a key fob, which I will have to pull out in the video because we'll use that to turn the car to the on position. Um, and that one, again, can be had in a, in a push button start, but you'll have to move up the trim lines to do that. So two little options there. All right, let's jump into the Sportage first, mostly because I have that key in my hand and it's easier to do that. So we're going to take a look at the driver's seat. So where are we headed today? Let me just give you a sense of where we're going. Uh, I will talk specs. A lot of the specs are in the brochures or you guys kind of know this. Uh, if you have questions about specs, I'll talk specs. What I'm going to show is the interesting stuff that doesn't show up in the spec sheet. So driver's seat, rear seat, trunk. Uh, we'll look at some lighting things. And if there's things that come up in your, in your mind of things that I should mention, even if you're not live with us, ask me in the comments or ask me in the live comments and I will focus on those. And if I have to pull some of these back in here for a future video, no problem. That's what we do. We can do that. No problem for you. So stick around. We're going to be about a half an hour, anything over a half an hour. And we're usually answering your questions or we've gone off topic to answer the off topic questions. All right, jumping in here. First of all, Sportage has been around for a little while, pretty popular car. It's always going to be a value this year. Good programs on this car all the time. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. You're going to get a lot of car for the price. Um, and yeah, so this one happens to be cloth. You've got a high adjustable seat. That's what that big lever there is. If you push it down, the seat will lower. If you pump it up, the seat will raise. So you've got height adjustable seat there. You've also got pretty cool things like fold-in mirrors. And I want to ask you guys to forgive me a little bit. We had this car real quickie cleaned. It is not detailed in any way. Uh, it did come in quite dirty from the uh, compound. This is a pretty cool feature that a lot of you like. It has mirrors that fold in. Oops, let's just sit in the car and we'll show you the properly. Turn the car to the on position, but we won't start it because we are indoors. Bear with my poor camera work for a second. All right, so you can see the blind spot detection there showing up, but more importantly, we were gonna show you this. These mirror housings do fold in. If you're in a tight parking spot, you can fold them in. If you park it in a garage, you can fold them in. Uh, you can leave them out as well, and they can fold in and out with your um, locks uh, when you uh, lock the car as well on many of these cars. So we're gonna leave in the automatic position, which can fold in and out. Coming across here, I want you guys to ignore fuel efficiency ratings because um, they're not accurate. This car has been sitting there idling for me as we've done a few things with it and idling for a couple other people as we showed them as well. So ignore the fuel efficiency, um, but you do have good technology in this center display screen here. You can move around. You've got tire pressure monitors here. You've got advanced driver assistance. I want to show you just a couple things in here. Rear cross traffic alert, blind spot, collision avoidance uh, or collision warning uh, there. You've got a number of different um, things in here that you can do. A couple little things just I like on the doors. When we unlock the doors, you know you unlock with the uh, button, you can set it to unlock all the doors with one tap or just the driver's door with one tap. The default is just the driver's door. I carry my kids a lot in my car, so I have it set up to tap the button once, unlock all the doors. So there's a lot of little settings in here. Now, you can get the horn to give you feedback or not. 
uh, which is nice if you don't want it to honk if you double tap that uh, double tap the um, so I should clarify what we're doing here if you double tap the lock button on this car there is a beeping sound now beep as in a high pitch beep um, as opposed to the horn sound so beep is different than horn uh, you can set up when you double tap it will instead of just beeping it will honk the horn so honking and beeping are different things in my terminology for this purpose of this video and you can set that up so it's a little bit less uh you know prominent so there's a lot of detail in here that you can cycle through lights all kinds of stuff that you can go through and i'll let you go that later traction control those kind of things and of course um again ignoring fuel efficiency ratings on this car again 52.8 liters per 100 kilometers again dealership cars really do sit around a lot and move and idle and stuff like that they're just speedometer and you can somebody asked me a while ago can you change this to miles per hour you can very easily do that that hold okay will disappear in just a second here. But if you do hold the OK button right now, it can switch to miles per hour. So somebody had asked me that in the past, the previous Sportages couldn't always do that, current ones, no problem. Uh, move across the screen here. Now, if you've looked at the Sportage in the past, this had a smaller screen. And I'm just gonna take the uh, shipping plastic off of this car so you can see a little less glare. Camera always shows more glare than you see in person, and that's because the camera has one eye, you have two, and that sort of diffuses the glare a little bit. A um, lot of good stuff here. You've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This larger screen used to be only standard on the top trim level. So now it's standard on every trim level. This is an LX model. So it's essentially an entry level model, but it does have all wheel drive and it does have that night sky package and really looks sharp on the outside. Moving down, you can see a little bit more entry level type stuff. You've got the uh, manual climate control. You'll see in the Celtos, we have a automatic climate control. So we all know how to work this pretty simply there. Uh, turn the fans up, turn the temperature up or down, set it where you want to go, no big deal. Coming down a little further, We've got uh, your rump roasters, as I like to call them, seat heaters in this car. Uh, if you had a higher trim level, you could get a steering wheel uh, heater as well. Higher trim level again, you can get the um, ventilated seats as well. So you can move a long ways in this car. And we'll show you some of those features in the Seltos at the same price range. And that's really why the Seltos is good. If, if these are the features that matter most to you, the Seltos is going to be the one to go to. Now, why would you go to this car? Well, let's talk about that. This car has a 2.4 liter engine. It has a six speed automatic transmission. It's not an IVT transmission. And that means that this car is rated to tow. So let's take a look down here with that automatic transmission. First of all, we'll get some shipping plastic on here as well. So ignore some of these um, obvious detail issues. That's just shipping plastic. But this six speed automatic transmission, you can shift it over here and choose your own gears if you like. This is a car that is capable of towing 2,000 pounds. You do have more space in this car, and uh, that matters. Drive modes, you've only got three, eco, sport, and normal, and I think that's just fine. Um, you'll notice that the eco mode, I'll just show you in the dash here. The eco mode right here, let me just zoom back in. There we go. Sport mode, normal mode, eco mode. Now this one has an eco mode. You'll notice in the Seltos, we go to a smart mode instead of just an eco mode. The smart mode will automatically kick you out of eco mode if you get into the throttle, whereas this car will resist downshifts in the eco mode. So what people like about it is it's really gonna do a good job of saving you fuel. What people don't like about the eco mode is sometimes when you get into it to get on the highway, you gotta get into it a little bit more and then you have an aggressive downshift and a really a lot of revving if you really floor it. Um, so the eco mode works great if you are an economical driver. I would say myself, pretty no real, real issues with using eco mode. But if you're a bit more of an aggressive driver, you're gonna wanna be in normal or sport for fun, normal mode most of the time. The Seltos with that smart mode allows an aggressive driver to keep it in smart mode get fuel efficiency when you're going for fuel efficiency or when you're just driving normally uh, but as soon as you get into the throttle it'll give you those modes automatically which is pretty a cool feature in the Seltos. again a little bit more modern car of the Seltos. Uh, down here you've got kind of normal stuff the one thing that people are a little surprised about this is not leather wrapped and that's because neither is your steering wheel when you have a leather wrapped steering wheel in the sportage you tend to get the heated steering wheel this one is not heated and that doesn't really bother me i think you're still getting pretty good value here um, overall going to just zoom around the car for a quick second here. A couple little cool things there. You've got a little uh, pull handle there on the passenger side, which goes up into that tweeter there. On this driver's side, you do not have the same pull handle here. It's actually asymmetrical completely because you've got some more controls here. Just keeps it out of the way of the driver's area, which gives you access to the blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert. I should show you the camera as well. It's hard to film a camera. The backup camera though on these cars is excellent and you get a big clear screen. You can see every line on the floor. You can see the dirt in the floor, no problem. 
and when you're filming a screen that's not a good way to show clarity but there you go we are showing good clarity there over here on the steering wheel cruise control is pretty much standard these controls control that control that center display but cruise control is just a standard cruise control you're going to see a smart cruise control at this price point in the uh seltos and uh, over here you've got your bluetooth controls automatic headlights with fog lights we'll take a look at them a little later these ones are the incandescent bulbs or the halogen bulbs where you'll see on the seltos we've entered into the led lighting on that car so let's just jump out of this car for a quick second we'll go to the seltos and i gotta walk by my lights they just turned off all right any questions about the sportage we can take questions now we'll just double check for a quick second before we jump into the seltos here um you know maybe it's a natural break I'm going to be that guy who's annoyingly begging for likes. Uh, if you were waiting to maybe have me earn that like, have I earned it yet? Just a little click. I don't know. You tell me. All right. Also, if you want to subscribe to our channel, uh, we do this every single weekday. I do have some vacation coming up this summer, but especially with some of these new cars that are coming out for Kia Hyundai lineup, I think it's a pretty exciting time to be in the lineup. All right. Somebody says my favorite part is where you put the bear in the trunk. That's coming. Uh, there we go. Uh, da, 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 da. So you guys have got the measurements right here for me. So Sportage is 176.4 inches in length. The Tucson, oh, you guys comparing to the Tucson, 182. So are we comparing to the 2022 Tucson? Because the 2022 Tucson is the redesigned new model. So the previous Tucson felt like me to be a hair smaller. The new Tucson is a redesigned model and it is a larger car. So uh, we have some videos of the new Tucson up here as well on our channel, of course, if you want to see that. Uh, I'd like to do that again. Maybe I'll do that again tomorrow. We'll, uh, I just I quite like that car as well. So we'll pull it in here if we can. There we go. What is the color charge? On some of our colors, there's an extra charge. It's more of a metallic color and they charge a little bit extra. So, okay, so they are saying 2022 Tucson. Yeah, the new Tucson is a little bit longer. Uh, so there you go. Width wise, it's basically within a quarter inch, uh, but length, it is certainly longer. So there we go. Okay, any other questions that I see? Not a whole lot. All right, let's jump into the Seltos and go for a direct comparison here. Again, one thing that's changed the, um, it's a minor thing that only the Kia nerds pick up, but uh, used to have an all wheel drive badge right over there. This is an all wheel drive model, but they're moving away from some of that extra badging. On the Seltos, they still have the all wheel drive badge here, but they did move away from some of the badging on the rear. And while I show badging on the rear, I should just point out, uh, so again, they used to have an EX uh, badge here for at least the EX or EX Premium. It's now gone. And of course, the Sportage has the all-wheel badging down low. And again, you can see that Sportage badging there with that nice uh, black tinted or black colored uh, Sportage there. Black roof rails as well on that car, black wheels. We'll take a quick look at them in a second, but there we go. Thanks, Mr. PR. <laughs> oh, Mr. Oper. <laughs> so you're giving a like to Humberto from Puerto Rico is helping me out here. He's a pretty, he's a regular. And uh, for the most part, I think he's got great information for us. <laughs> I have to say for the most part, just in case he says something now that I have to flat out disagree with. All right. So again, this car is a thousand dollars more, but essentially if you can afford that car, you can afford this car with the Seltos, you do not have towing capacity. So it's not rated to tow. The Sportage, you do have towing capacity. We're gonna take a look at back seat and rear seat in a second here to see some of those things. So you're gonna to start to be impressed with the feature content in here, but you're sacrificing a little bit of power. You're sacrificing that towing capacity. You are gaining some fuel efficiency though as we step into this car. So over here, powered seats instead of the manual seats, leather seats instead of the cloth seats. You've got perforations here, which is a detail on every leather seat. Now these aren't real leather, it's artificial leather, um, but the, um, You've got this uh, nice leather. The perforations are a detail in every one of these cars with this leather. The difference with the EX Premium is they add the ventilated seat in this car. So let's jump in. If you like the folding mirrors that we had on the, um, on the um, Sportage, you don't get them here. These are manual fold, which means you do it the old fashioned way when you need to do it like that instead of the power fold. All right, I'm just gonna turn the climate control off here for a second, save some battery. One thing I love about the EX Premium model in particular is if you look at the EX model and below in the Seltos, you're gonna have a very similar to that dash to what you just saw in the Sportage. The EX Premium and above adds this nice color display screen. So this is a clear detailed display screen that I really quite like. It is, um, very easy to read. Again, ignore fuel efficiency numbers. A lot of the software is basically the same stuff. Um, there's your all wheel drive um, sort of bar graph that tells you what your wheels are doing because it can transfer the power around here very well. Um, without going into detail right now, if you want to know details, just ask me. 
But our all-wheel drive system is among the best all-wheel drive systems for snow. If you are in an environment where you're coming across poor weather, uh, rainy, slippery, snowy conditions, this is one of the best systems out there. And I don't mind explaining that if you want to know. If you want me to keep moving on, then go ahead. But just feel free to ask me if you want to know more about that. So again, a lot of information in here. Um, everything you want. Now, the one difference here is when you scroll down here, you don't end up at the speedometer page like you would on the... Um, on the Sportage because you have a permanent digital speedometer right where my finger just killed the focus there. Uh, so over there on the right side. So that'll always be up. Uh, this is part of your smart drive mode here. If I switch the drive modes right now, we're in normal. We're gonna go to smart. When it says smart, it's gonna go smart eco. So there you go. That is your eco mode. And as you drive, there'll be a bar graph moving left or moving right here on that econ and dynamic. Uh, so once I'm starting the car and running, that bar graph will kind of, or that line graph, I guess will move one way or the other. If you keep it in that econ setting, it's gonna stay in eco. As you move it towards the dynamic, it'll move it out of the eco to a normal mode and to a sport mode if necessary. So it does a better job of reading what you're doing and it doesn't resist downshifts. The only difficulty um, with that eco mode is people who are heavier footed uh, when they're driving, they do have um, some difficulty with eco because you got to give it gas, give it gas. It dulls the throttle, whereas this one is a little more responsive. If you're going to test drive the Celtos for the very first time, uh, I recommend the smart mode. Certainly try all the drive modes, but the uh, smart mode should be a pretty good idea of what it is like to drive. Over here, you gain satellite radio. You gain the 10 and a quarter inch screen. So what we used to have, well, I got the really line up poorly for the bright light here, um, but yeah, you gain um, the 10 and a quarter inch screen. So what we used to have is the eight inch screen, which is very similar to this, right? You can see that sort of eight inch screen there. Um, over here, you have the right side of the screen in 2022 is now used for all sorts of information here. Um, basically all of our backup cameras are designed for this size of revolution, resolution as opposed to the wider screen. So you still have essentially a smaller thing, smaller screen. Now you can see different views here if you wanna look straight down from the bottom or if you wanna do a proper rear view camera like that. Again, rear cross traffic alert. So if a car or person is crossing your uh, view, both of these cars will warn you with arrows and beeping if there's somebody that's coming from out of your sight into where you are. So that's kind of a nice feature to have. Um, but yeah, you have this widescreen, which I really quite like. It is a advantage to this car. Oh, I don't have to hit the button. I have to take it out of park. There we go. You also have multiple drive modes in this uh, software, which is pretty cool. You get the um, driver one or driver two or guest. We're going to leave it on guest for now because it's all set up to work from there. But you can customize a lot of the features in this car. So this really becomes your own car, even if you share the car. Down here, some redundant buttons. I really like this um, star button. You can make that for your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You can customize that. You do have, like I said, Sirius XM, satellite radio, HD radio, Bluetooth. And of course, when you have a car with Sirius satellite radio, you get three months of free satellite radio here at Brantford Kia. All right, jumping back down here. Auto climate control. I really like this automatic climate control. It is a single zone system in the Celtos. You can't get a dual zone system. Again, the glare that you're seeing here is because the camera has one eye. Having two eyes diffuses that glare and you really don't have any issues seeing this at all. So it's a little misleading on camera. And of course our uh, little studio here is not a proper perfect studio to set it all up for your view. Um, what you have though is a pretty cool system where you can turn down the automatic climate control. So I can cho choose the temperature that I want and I can limit how fast the fan will go. It'll go a little bit slower um, and take a little longer to reach that, which keeps the passengers and driver from getting a lot of a rush of cold air and then turning down, down aggressively. It'll just bring it there slowly. Um, so I think once you're uh, up to temperature or down to temperature, you may find that one of these lower settings is more comfortable. That's what I'm starting to find as I'm driving these cars more regularly. Um, that just works well for me. I'm gonna keep it off just now to keep the battery going. One really cool thing I have in this car that you can get in the higher level Sportage, but you don't have in the one that we looked at today, is this wireless charge pad. Now in this particular one, there's a vent in the back which can vent um, that phone as it's charging. It's gonna create a little bit of heat. We just set the phone there and it charges. It is nicely rubber padded. It blows the fan over it, so it is a little uh, cooler. And then down here, if you were to connect uh, wired connection in any way, USB port there to connect for US for Android Auto Apple CarPlay if you wanted to go wired, which you have to in this car actually. Um, and then you have the um, USB port there, which is a charge one and a 12 volt port there. So moving on down here, let me just put the gear shift out of the way. Uh, now, this is an IVT transmission, a little bit better for fuel efficiency. Again, no, not rated to tow, so there we go. Can the 2022 Celtics in Canada accommodate the install of Kia's multiple camera systems? Uh, short answer is, I don't know how to do that. I don't think our parts department knows how to do that. Um, I know some world markets have those 3D, uh, or sorry, three, 
Fix the surround view camera. Uh, we don't have that here. It's not available in the Celtos, and therefore I don't think the software allows you to do that. Uh, I don't know how to do that. So um, if you can, it's not something I, I know of that anybody has done or that we know how to do. Uh, down here, rub posters like we mentioned, ventilated seats there. Now the ventilated seats in our Kia models, a lot of cars have ventilated seats. They kind of take the heat out of the leather seat. What's really good about these is they move the fans fast enough. There's enough air moving through these seats that you genuinely feel like the seats are cooled because it's just blowing air through and it's blowing your cold air conditioning, which of course runs in the vents underneath the seats and everything else, uh, blows the cold air seats through the seats, but it really moves enough air to actually feel like the seats are cooled. So really nice feature there because you end up having to turn it down, which is nice, but it keeps you from sweating. Heated steering wheel in this car, again, not something you get at the Sportage at this price point. And of course, hill descent control, four wheel drive lock button. Those are all similar to what we showed, electronic parking brake here as well. Coming up over to, the steering wheel, cruise control like we showed before, but this one is a smart cruise control. So now I gain the benefit of being able to, the car will automatically keep its distance from vehicles in front of us. Uh, that car there does not have lane keep assist or lane follow assist. This car has both, which means this car is gonna help steer itself, keeping it centered in the lane. Does a really good job of doing that. It sounds kind of creepy and weird in functionality, in the way it works, it works really well. While I'm looking at me, sunroof in this car. Now, if you get a sunroof in the Sportage and you move up a trim line, the sunroof in the Sportage, flat out better. It's a panoramic roof, it's amazing. Uh, it's one of the key reasons to buy a Sportage. If you're gonna get the sunroof model, um, this is the best sunroof you can get in the Seltos. Perfectly good sunroof, it's aligned nicely above your head so you do feel and see it. Sometimes in a sedan, it starts kind of behind your head, uh, but it does work well. It's just not a panoramic one, so it's less cool. Uh, while we're looking at this, if you look at here, if I'm just gonna touch the rim of this uh, light or touch the rim of this light, um, touch the glass or the rim, those individual lights come on, it's pretty cool. You also have UVO Intelligence. I know I'm looking at it terribly. UVO Intelligence is those three buttons, but it really is a cell phone app. And that's the big benefit of that. The cell phone app allows you to remote start the car, tell if your doors are locked or unlocked or open, that kind of thing. There's a whole bunch of functions in there. Remote starting the car is actually pretty cool too. You can turn on the heated steering wheel, things like that. So really nice features there. And uh, I think we're gonna leave the driver's seat right there. So we've got three minutes left in this video. Uh, to be at that 30 minute mark, which I like to stay at. We can show you rear seat and trunk space. We're gonna take your questions and we're probably gonna go about four or five minutes longer today. But if you have questions, ask them now. Let's uh, get some of them out there. I'll deal with them in a second. I think I'm gonna go rear seat to rear seat and then I will take your questions and then we'll look at the trunk if that makes sense for you guys. Uh, but feel free to, if you have a question, if you've been waiting to ask a question, uh, don't wait anymore. Now's a good time to ask it and uh, we'll go from there. Lots more features I didn't show you, but if you wanna see this vehicle in detail, uh, we did a video half an hour of just this vehicle the other day. All right, a couple questions coming in. First, we're going to show you the rear seat. Starting the Seltos, these seats are pretty close to where I would need them to drive. Sometimes I move them a hair back to film, but I think it's pretty close. Now, big thing when you jump in here, it's easy. The Seltos is a big vehicle, and it's so big, in fact, that it's pretty close to the size of the Sportage. I'm going to tilt it a little bit forward from where it was. It has two seating positions. This is the most upright position. This would be the least headroom possible, and it's a lot of headroom. So... The next generation Sportage is going to grow and it needs to because there's not a ton more difference in rear seat space in the Sportage. Now, because it's a higher trim level back here, first of all, I've got great knee space, but I also have heated seats back here. You won't get that on the Sportage. In fact, oh no, I think you might get it on the very top trims, but you won't get it anywhere near this price point. So again, features are gonna be higher. Some capacities are gonna be better in the Sportage. Vents down here, USB port, place to stick your phone. You've got a pocket in the back of the seat and plastic back seats. The driver's side does not have a pocket. I want to be clear that this is shipping plastic. Ignore that. Uh, but no pocket on the driver's side here. But pretty good space to be. Two levels of recline. Like I said, where I am and about an inch or two back is all you get here. But that's pretty good. And for the size and class of this car, it's class leading. This is a smaller class than the Sportage. Um, but you get a lot of value, a good price point. A lot of people are looking at Honda CRVs and moving to this. You want a small crossover, it's room enough for your family. Um, the price difference for features is mind-blowingly different between that car and this. And they'll say, oh, well, that competes with our HRV. Well, this is bigger than the HRV. This is nicer. Um, so there's, you've got those options there. Now, jumping in quickly to the Sportage. The biggest benefit with the Sportage is, although there is a little bit more space, you really gain a lot of recline in these seats. So your rear passengers, if you're going on a long trip, uh, if you're a small business owner and you carry a lot of big boxes, this seat can actually go a hair further up and be completely square. You can see it's kind of uncomfortably forward right now. I think I counted like 16 different positions 
of the backrest here um, if I want to tilt that. So as I tilt it, one, two, three, four, I can go way, way back here and come all the way up to I'm square. So when I put it in a comfortable position right here or so, um, again, good headroom, maybe a hair more, but I don't think it's gonna be a make or break thing for most people. Down here, when I take a look at the knee room, there is definitely more knee room here. No plastic bag seats, they are cloth, but you do have the pocket here. And you also have, instead of a USB port, you have a 12 volt port, which does allow you a little bit of um, ability to run a USB with two ports in there. Whereas the other one being a USB will only have the one USB port. And then of course you've got the vents back here as well. So lower trim level, but kind of matching it for rear seat uh, features. Again, not uh, gaining the, um, you're not gaining the heated rear seats on this trim level, but you can get those moving up. All right, I'm gonna take your questions. Gonna look at the teddy bear in the trunk in a minute. Like I said, we're at uh, about 38, 40 seconds over the 30 minute mark. We'll take your questions. We'll jump over to the uh, teddy bear test, which is everybody's favorite part. And we'll finish with that. Um, but yeah, 45 or so of you are on right now. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Let's see if we can get to 50 likes uh, in the next couple minutes. If all 47 of you hit that button right now, we'll get plus 50 likes. And I would really appreciate that. That'd be awesome if you could do that for me. Okay, jumping over to the questions. You guys don't wanna look at me. What do we got? Is there wireless CarPlay? Both cars uh, do not have wireless CarPlay. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of our eight inch screens, which this car doesn't have, um, have moved to a wireless CarPlay. So I haven't seen the eight inch screen Celtos and I wanna try to see if that will come in there. My, my information sheet does not say it's gonna come wirelessly, um, but I'm wondering about that. This car will not have wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. This generation, it is wired only. Now they both have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, it's just not wireless right now. Um, so uh, good question there, but not wireless. Uh, if you can put the car in drive with the parking brake on, it will release, uh, when you drive off or oh good question so a lot of the hyundai vehicles sometimes when you put the car in drive the parking brake doesn't release uh, i haven't tried it on the 2022 but 2021 Celtos with parking brake as soon as you put it in drive that electronic parking brake does release so good question about the electronic parking brake uh, unless they change that for 2022 i expect it to be the exact same some of the hyundai cars it will stay um, on 360 cameras available and other vehicles in the class yep other other vehicles like tucson palisade all those kind of things yeah uh Da, 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 da. Kia Celtos in Canada, commenting the install Kia's multiple cameras. No, we talked about that. Uh, okay, I think that's it, right? Not a whole lot of questions. Where can we see the 2022 Celtos colors? Uh, you can't, so that's a good question. So let me flip across to my information sheet. I'm not supposed to show you guys everything here. I'm on my computer here. Let me just flip around here, you can see me. I'm just searching my computer because I have the internal documents that I can't put on your screen. Um, but I may break the rules and show you if there's no other information on that screen. Uh, yeah, I can show you this. Okay, so let's just do that for a sec. Okay, uh, so this is the Sportage. Snow White Pearl, Black Cherry, which is black, but in the bright sunlight, you can see just a hint of cherry color in there, but I mean, it's just a hint. I've had a car in that color. It's a really nice color. Scarlet Red, it's red. Steel Gray, it's gray. Storm Blue, it's blue. So those are the colors for the uh, black cloth or black leather. Those are colors for the um, Sportage. Let me see if I can do the exact same thing for you on the Seltos because again, they just aren't on the website yet. But again, I just have to make sure I don't show you some of, it's not that I don't show you, it's just these are internal documents and I can't post them online. There's just rules about that. So um, let me just make sure, yeah, we should be okay showing this. Uh, let me just make it a little smaller. Okay, so different names here, but same idea. Um, Neptune Blue on the Celtos, Lunar Orange. It is a bit of an orange. It's kind of a, oh, it's a coppery color. I guess it's gonna be orange. Starbright Yellow, really good marketing color. We've used that a lot. Dark Ocean Blue, probably one of my favorite colors in this car. Um, oh, where's we going here? That should be more than that. There we go. Uh, Gravity Gray there, Steel Gray there, Onyx, which is black, Snow White Pearl, which is what we're looking at today. And there really is a nice pearl. One of the most uh, popular colors is this uh, white color. Under these LED lights, you can't really see that pearl. In real life, you can see that pearl quite nicely. So um, great question there to show colors. Again, because neither of these cars are on the website yet, that was a really good question that I didn't think to uh, talk about. All right. Da, 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 da. Is there anything else? I think we'll leave it right there. Okay, why is the blue color not available on the highest trim? That I don't know. Uh, Kia Canada makes decisions about what trim lines to equip certain things. And um, 
I, I don't question them too much. They, they have their reasons for making their decisions. Sometimes it's not available all the time. Uh, yeah, there's sometimes reasons. The other thing is the Americans sometimes get a Celtos with a um, um, separate color roof, maybe a dark roof or something like that. If you have a sunroof, you can't do a different color roof. And of course, EX and above in Canada, they all have sunroofs. So therefore, none of them in Canada. They basically opted for the sunroof. They decided the Canadian market would want more sunroofs than they would want a separate color roof. And that's why in Canada, we don't have that. In the States, if you have a separate color roof, they will not have the, um, they will not have the different color uh, roof or different, they will not have the sunroof. Different color roof, you will not have sunroof. There we go. All right, are you going to preview the Sorento 2021 SUV? Yes, for sure. We've done Sorento in the past. Uh, I will do a lot more Sorento in the future, so no problem there. This is our teddy bear. This floor raises and lowers. You can see right now it is in the lowest position. That's going to give teddy bear the most amount of space. I'm going to keep this um, cargo cover in on this higher trim level. Lower trim levels do not have this cargo cover that you're looking at right now. Bear with me as I'm tucking my teddy bear in. I always tuck his uh, belly up against the back of the area there. And again, you can see he's pretty good. With that uh, floor lowered, he's underneath that cargo cover, but he's got a lot of space. And again, class leading space in the Seltos. So think Hyundai Kona, think um, you know many other um, SUVs as well. The, the Seltos has a larger trunk space. Now, you do have big trunk space here. You can get a cargo cover on the higher trim levels on this car. Actually, you can get it probably as an accessory on this car because the plastic is sort of designed for it but the sportage same thing the floor lowers a little bit i do know the spec offhand it's 72 liters of extra cargo space although it doesn't look like a big lowering down here uh, compared to some other cars I'll leave those uh, mats in there you do have some extra storage space underneath there still and we'll throw the teddy bear in here and again these seats can go a little bit more square and upright you can create a little bit extra space in here for teddy is there more room in this car in the um backseat space there is but there's not a ton more and that's why this car is going to be moving bigger in the next generation it really does uh not give a ton more space than the seltos the big difference is a uh, more powerful engine and um, you have a, a towing capacity any any sportage can tow no Seltos can tow. In other words, they're not rated to tow. There is a Seltos uh, uh, one step up from this. Everything you see here with a little bit better, a little more powerful engine, uh, it can also not tow. So any Sportage can tow. The Seltos is not rated to tow. And that's one of the big uh, advantages there. And if you start moving up here, you do have the panoramic sunroof. And again, you've got those pretty cool looking black rims. There is no night sky edition of the Seltos at this point. Seltos is available in 2022 with a burgundy leather. Uh, this one, I believe, I, oh, I can't remember the colors of the leather in this car. We'll talk about that when we get those cars in. So we're going to leave Teddy there with the trunk open for a second. We've gone 37 minutes, guys. That's a little bit longer than I like to be. 75 of you are on right now. We were going to go for 50 likes. So if there's six people that can hit the like button, I would really appreciate that. I'm just going to double check the comments before we finish up here. And we'll let you go. Seltos is larger than Soul and Forte. Yes, it is. Shares a powertrain from this trim line on down to the bottom. It shares a uh, engine and transmission with the Forte and the Soul. It is bigger than the Soul. This is the all-wheel drive Soul that everybody was asking about. This is what we got instead. And I drive a Kia Soul. I'm a huge fan of a Kia Soul. But I'm going to be honest, the Kia Soul is not the Seltos. The Seltos is a better uh, car um, to be an all, than just an all-wheel drive soul because you gain some space, you gain some things that the market doesn't have in this uh, segment. And I think it's um, in that segment, you want to move up a little bit. You can still get a Kia Soul. You just can't get a Kia Soul with all-wheel drive. But if you go with all-wheel drive, you're still getting the same engine, same transmission, but you're gaining some space. Uh, you're gaining some ground clearance. You're gaining some nice things in the Seltos. There we go. Uh, I think that's all. I don't see a whole lot of questions here that I didn't ask. Why doesn't Kia put a strap or class to put the USB cord? is it's in the way when you drive yeah you know what so there on my kia soul ev when i use android Auto, apple carplay the way my phone sits and the way the cord plugs in i haven't got a great spot to sit a great spot to put it you know what the solution is going to be right the solution is going to be they're moving to wireless android auto and wireless apple carplay uh so and again the wireless charger is really helpful i use my wireless charger in my car all the time uh, you'd be amazed at how long your phone lasts just for the few minutes you drive in your car every day. Um, just puts that juice back in your phone. So that's pretty good. All right, guys, uh, I got 89 people on. If you missed the first part of this video, we've covered these two vehicles in detail. If you're looking for the next generation Kia Sportage, please hit the subscribe button because I promise you, I will cover that next generation in detail more than anybody. All we know right now 
our outside pictures. What we're looking for is new information. As soon as there's new information about powertrains and specs and spe specifically uh, the models that are actually coming to our dealerships right here, um, I will break that down for you in detail, hopefully better than anybody. I, that's kind of what we specialize in. And I will cover that vehicle over and over and over again. So you'll never see more videos on another channel than you will hear more in depth. So we're going to do that coming up as well. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, only a couple more videos this week. I do have some vacation planned. Um, so uh, just bear with me if I disappear for a while. I'll be out in the wilderness and I will be back. Uh, but we'll be here this week. So anyways, thanks everyone for joining us. It's been fun. We'll uh, let you go. And I really appreciate all of your likes, your subscriptions, and just hanging around watching me or watching with me. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.